we have a new segment and we're gonna do this every single week. We're gonna call this a cup of coal. A cup of coal. All right, Errol, my, my cup of coal today goes to all the, the fans, the analysts, and, and people out there who complain about professional athletes demanding new contracts. You know, as a former player, that bothered me more than anything. You know, as a, as a player, you get signed to a, a contract. An owner, a team can cut you at any moment in time, and nobody complains about it because they didn't honor their contract. But yet when a player in his prime demands more money because he's outperforming that contract, Everyone has something to say about it. Now, you go back to the Jamal Adams situation. I, I know we talked about it earlier in the show, but Jamal Adams is a player who was, was drafted number six overall. He has two years left on his deal. And, yes, he was drafted number six. Yes, you expect greatness out of the sixth pick of the draft. But Jamal has been consistently been a pro bowler. He's been an all-pro safety. He's dominated on the field. He has 12 sacks, and he's a safety. That's more sacks than any pass rusher the Jets have had in years. He's outperformed his contract. It's time for him, for the Jets to pay up and, and give that man what he deserves. And everyone seems to have a problem with it. You know, now Jamal is an emotional guy. And I don't agree with the way that he's going about trying to, to get leverage and, and giving teams ultimatums and telling them where he wants to be traded to. I don't agree with that. But I do understand that Jamal is a very passionate player. When he's out there on the field, he's going to give it his all. He's going to be dominant. He's going to demand greatness from his teammates and hard work from his teammates. And he is the consummate pro. For a fan, for, for someone to be upset that he is demanding more money, that bothers, that bothers the heck out of me. And, and, and listen, if I'm a player, I'm out there balling. I'm doing my job. Pay me. And so I do think the Jets should pay that man. They should pay him and, be a, and let that be a great example for the organization that if you come in here and you're drafted by the Jets or you're signed as a free agent with the Jets and you ball out, you do your job, you exceed expectations, we're going to compensate you, and this is the place where you, that you want to come play. So I think that that's my cup of coal, people complaining about these players wanting new contracts, wanting to be paid for what they do out there on the field, when on the other side of the bill, the owners, the general managers can cut a player whenever they feel like it, and no one has anything to say about it. No, oh, it's absolutely wrong for the owners to do something like that. And my argument to you is, I, I agree, Jamal Adams deserves the money. We've said this in the first subject, the, the first uh, monologue that we got into in the beginning of the show. I, I said Jamal Adams deserves every single penny that he should get. I just think that Jamal Adams should take a step back. Let the Jets rebuild this organization. They have a new GM in place. They need to find a way to figure things out. And Joe Douglas, this is a new GM. This is a guy that's never been in a position like this before. He's been under Baltimore. He's won three Super Bowls, two with the Baltimore Ravens and one with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. He was with the Chicago Bears when Adam Gase was there, so they know each other very, very well. And I like Joe Douglas. I think Joe Douglas did a sensational job in the draft, which we will get into a little bit later. But I'll tell you this right now. When you look at this team and the rebuild of what you have seen in the, in the draft this year, look at the offensive players he added. Look at Denzel Mims. Look at the running back they added. Look at what they added defensive players. Obviously, in the third round, they added uh, safety. They added uh, a defensive lineman. You know they're going to add players. They added some corners in the later rounds. They added offensive linemen. They added another quarterback. They are starting to build around the offense. This team is all about one player and one player only. It's the quarterback, and that's what they believe. They believe the quarterback is the future of this organization. Not saying Jamal Adams isn't the future, but money talks. And you saw what Patrick Mahomes got, and, I, and that's what I want to get into. Patrick Mahomes got a $500 million contract while this is going on. The COVID-19, Kansas City gave him the biggest contract in sports history, over $500 million, and I do believe he will renegotiate that deal probably five, six years down the road because he's only going to be like 28, 29 years old. This guy has been the best quarterback in the league the last two years. You want to argue Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson won an MVP last year. If Lamar Jackson wins a Super Bowl this year with Baltimore, I guess you're going to have to pay him $500 million too because to me, Patrick Mahomes got paid a lot of money. He deserves every penny of it. I'm not going to complain. Kansas City wanted to pay him. He got it. But how are they going to pay Jones? 
he's going to want $20 million a year. This is a, one of the big parts of their defense and moving forward for this team. The, the defense is really where they structured their team over all these years. They were a great defensive team, a decent offensive team with Alex Smith. Now Patrick Mahomes took over. Patrick Mahomes has been sensational. He throws with his left. He throws with his right. He moves to the left. He moves to the right. He runs. He throws. He throws on his knees. He does everything. I mean, the guy, I'm surprised he doesn't spit it out in some, some other directions. I mean, this guy has been incredible. But $500 million, wow, that's a big contract, my friend. He deserves every penny of it. You know, he's a transcendent player. He's the face of the NFL, and, and he's done a great job uh, of leading that franchise. Now, when you talk about building a team, you know, when you build a house, what do you need? You need that foundation. Mm -hmm. And that foundation isn't built around one player. You know, when you talk about Sam Darnold, you're going to need players like C.J. Mosley, like Jamal Adams. You need several players, foundation players that are going to be there. You know, then you fill in the pieces. Then you can, you know, spend a little less money here. And as you get to the top, you can get free agents here and there and got, pay guys at the minimum that contribute. But you have to pay those foundation players. And Jamal is one of those players that is all pro. He does it the right way. He's a leader of your team. Pay him. It's, uh, you look at Patrick Mahomes, Christian McCaffrey, Zeke Elliott. You know, all these guys are foundation players for their organization, you know, meaning that they're going to show up and show out whenever they step on the field. You're, they're going to demand greatness from their teammates. They're great leaders on their team. And, and they play hard. No, I mean, I, all these guys need to be I compensated. All these guys need to be compensated. And listen, everybody can't make the big bucks, but there are going to be a handful of players on your team that have outrageous contracts. And listen, football, the, the salary cap is going up every year. It's around $200 million now. You have enough, there's enough money to go around to all these players if you want to be able to reward those all pro players on your team. If you but have. But the quarterback, I'm sorry I cut you off, but the quarterback position is the most important position in football. Everybody says it. I disagree. I think defense wins championships. You're absolutely right. Jamal Adams, the leader of the defense, he deserves the contract. And he's going to get his contract. If it's not from the Jets, he'll get it from the Cowboys, Seattle, wherever he wants to go. If he wants to go to Guam, he can play for Guam. I mean, he's going to get paid. I mean, somebody's going to pay this guy because he's one of the best players in the league. But my argument is go up and down what Jamal Adams did last year. Go look at what he did. His top games were against three bad teams. Now, I'm not saying Jamal Adams isn't the best safety in the league. He's proven in the last three seasons he is. Him, Derwin James, and very few people you could say that is anywhere close to what Jamal Adams is and what Jamal Adams, Adams is going to be in the near future. But again, Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback. He's the one that drove the team to a Super Bowl. He's the one who drove the team to a playoff run. He's also a guy that won an MVP in practically his rookie season. Jamal Adams didn't take the Jets to the playoffs yet. He's not a guy that is going to put the team on his shoulders and take you. You need a quarterback to do that. Sam Donald's going to demand a lot of money. If he shows himself to be healthy this year and he could play behind that offensive line, you're going to have to pay that kid. And knowing that you're going to have to pay Jamal Adams 90-something million dollars, and then you're going to have to pay Sam Donald, that's almost a little bit more than 40% of your salary cap. That's a lot, Eric. A so, lot. So Okay, so that's why you draft players. That's why you draft great players. Right. They don't, the Jets are in a position where they don't have to pay their quarterback right now. They're getting him at a discount. They can afford to play, pay other players. But w since you said the quarterback should be the only one who's getting paid, what do you say about Christian McCaffrey? What do you say about Zeke Elliott? These guys are, are perennial uh, playoff teams. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not quarterbacks. They're, they're running backs on their team, and they have been compensated two years out of their contract and they've still been paid because their team sees the value of this player. They, they know that the player is a leader on their team. They perform well, and they should be compensated for it. I don't understand what is the big problem with Jamal. Yes, the numbers may be off, but let's, let's come into an, uh, to, to an agreement that mm -hmm. Jamal is going to make the oh, most yeah. amount of money for any safety playing no. in the NFL that has ever played in the NFL, mm -hmm. and he deserves it. No, he, no question he's going to make the most money. And he's demanding it. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the numbers right now. It, it's ridiculous. And, and I, I'll tell you this right now. When he becomes a free agent or close to his free agency, even next year, he could demand it. Go out there this year, prove yourself again that you are the best safety in the league, and the Jets will pay you. I, I believe Joe Douglas has no problem paying him the money that he wants. But again, you also have to take a step back and look at Sam Darnold. Right now, Sam Darnold isn't the star that they think he's going to be. And obviously, he's under a coach. And a lot of people skeptical. Uh, people are skeptical about Adam Gase and the way he coaches. And they think he's a quarterback guru. And a lot of people make jokes of that because who did he guru? What did he guru in all those different places that he's worked at? I mean, seriously, Peyton Manning? Peyton Manning guru him. 
I mean, Peyton Manning helped him. So again, there is nobody, and don't don't even bring up Jay Cutler, okay? Because Jay Cutler, as as good or decent of a quarterback he was with the Broncos, he went to Chicago, played one good season over there, and now he's not even in the NFL. He retired at a young age. This guy has been a complete joke. And Adam Gay says he wants to hold his shoulders up because he says, hey, you know, I, I coach Jay Cutler. You see his season. You saw what he did with the Bears. I'll tell you this right now. I, I love Jamal Adams. I don't want to lose Jamal Adams, but if – he is demanding things, and he's telling him, if you don't give me the money I want right now, trade me, and I'm going to give you a list of players, or a list, I'm sorry, not a list of players, a list of teams that I want to go to. I'm a little offset on that. I, I, I don't go to a GM. I don't go to a coach and say, you know what, <laughs> just trade me. You know, I don't want to be here anymore if you're not going to pay me. So you're absolutely right. I know. I, but Patrick Mahomes, he deserves every penny that he deserved. And, and I'm not taking shots at Ezekiel Elliott. I think he deserved the money. But again, he was, he was going to sit out the whole season if he didn't get it. And you're holding the, the owners, you're all holding the coaches to try to design their offenses the way they need to stru structure it because they don't have the player that they, they needed on that roster. So again, I, I agree with you absolutely. But again, I, I just disagree with the Jamal Adams thing. I think you need to take a step back, let Jamal Adams play another season, and let him earn his contract as well as he should.